All right, here's six life lessons I've learned by majoring in statistics. Number one, unfortunately, people don't care about how a study was done. I recently saw an article that related heart health to brushing your teeth. However, if you read a little bit further and they talked about the study, this was an observational study, so there's nothing that could be said about causation between the two. However, the news article that came out about the study basically just said that if you brush your teeth, you're less likely to have heart disease. And this seriously isn't the case because just people don't understand how experiments are run and how statistics works. So the life lesson I learned here is to always, always understand how a study was done. Number two, different organizations can use statistics against you. Now, what do I mean by this? Uh, I'm sure you've seen in a basic stats class, at least if your professor was pretty good, your professor explained how data visualizations and statistics can sometimes lie. So in our case, she brought up examples of news articles where she brought up very misleading data visualizations. Now, why were they misleading? Well, in one case, the y-axis was labeled starting at 50 and going to 55, and it looked like one of the bars was much, much higher than the other. However, when you really looked at the y-axis, you could see that this was only a couple percentages higher, and they were using it to try to push the story and the narrative that they were trying to push. So the lesson here is to always try to understand when you're seeing information, is this misleading? Is it going to be misleading to other people? And definitely, if you're making the visualization, do not make it misleading. Do not try to push a narrative that you're trying to push just because you can. All right, life lesson number three, the improbable will happen with enough of a sample size. So let's say, for example, uh, this is just off the top of my head. It's not true. You have a one in a million chance of getting struck by lightning. Now, with, I think, almost 150 or 150 plus million people in the United States, that means that 150 people in the United States per day could get struck by lightning. Now, when you put it like that, it sounds like a lot. And even though we say it's one in a million, it seems like super unlikely, with enough of a sample size, that's going to happen. And if a sample size of 150 million, statistically speaking, that would happen 150 times a day. So keep that in mind anytime you're working with probability that even if something is improbable with enough of a sample size, it is going to happen. If you're enjoying the video so far, go ahead down to the description. I have a newsletter link there. You just sign up with your email. I send you one email per week. I'm not going to spam you, but I talk about topics like this, and I think you'll really enjoy it. All right, life lesson number four. Sometimes the data is just incorrect. Working on projects all the time and statistics projects, you might get a chance to use real world data and you get to see that it's super, super messy. Now, when data is super messy, you really have to be cognizant of this and clean it before you're trying to make any visualizations or conclusions about the stuff in the data. I'll bring you a real world example. So I used to work on a manufacturing sort of project where we were taking data directly from a machine and sometimes the data was terrible. So um, it would read pressure, and sometimes the pressure would be 150, sometimes it would be 125, and then sometimes randomly it would be 86,000. Now, fortunately for me and the rest of the team that I was working with, we understood the process and knew that this was absolute bullcrap. There was no way that that pressure was 86,000. Now, if my team and I didn't understand this and didn't check to see if there were outliers or why there were outliers, we never would have noticed it. We would have factored it into our models, and our models would have been completely off, and we wouldn't have even known it. So sometimes your data will lie to you and you really, really have to pay attention. Number five, leave room for randomness. Now mainly I'm talking about model fitting. However, this is a life lesson that can be applied to real life too. Every single day when you wake up, something random is gonna happen. Whether it's for the better or for the worse, something random will happen. It'll happen every day and it'll happen to everybody. Now you can either not factor this in and just be surprised whether it's bad or good, you'll be surprised. But being a statistician, you know that there's randomness. You know that there's randomness in a lot of things. So you need to wake up every day being prepared for a surprise. And ultimately, when something bad happens or something even slightly bad or irritating, I know that it's just a random event that's going to happen to me every once in a while, and you just have to be prepared for it. So this is my favorite one. Number six, communication and storytelling. Now, this is one that you don't think about being a statistics major. You really nose down in the data. Uh, and you don't care about storytelling or English or anything. But really, I'm learning as time goes on that communication and storytelling is one of the most important things that you're going to learn as a stats major. Because the really, really good data analysts and data scientists know how to make their data tell a story. And they know how to make it tell the story that is actually true, not one that they crafted in their minds. And so if you want to advance in your life and your career, learn how to communicate and how to tell a story with data.
And all right, now that you know six of the biggest life lessons that I've learned as a stats major, watch this video next to see three mistakes that statistics students make in data analytics. You're really going to know what they are, and you're really going to want to fix them before you try to get a job.